Hello YouTubers, welcome to our channel Flying Notes Center. Today we're going to talk about semicircular rule. Semicircular rule is used a rule used in aviation in order to separate aircraft uh, in different flight levels. Just before we continue, please uh, leave a comment or subscribe for on, for, on our channel. Right, semicircular rule. As a result of the high volume of air traffic and limited airspace, a number of regulations and procedures have been put into place to protect pilots and their passengers while in the air. Many of these regulations and procedures protect aircraft and their occupants. Even when radio communication and air traffic control services are not available. One of the worst situations to be in is to be flying head on with another aircraft unknowingly at the same level and at an extremely high closing speed. This could probably lead to an accident and, uh, and uh, air collision. However, one rule that has been put in place to prevent such a situation is the semicircular rule which we are going to talk about. So on the semicircular rule, purpose and method of operation. In short, the main purpose of the semicircular rule is to prevent aircraft from flying at the same flight level in opposite directions and to avoid head-ons. How then does this rule prevent such dangerous situations? This is the question we're going to answer on the method of operation. A compass roll is divided into a compass roll, roll is divided into two sections, and the first section uh, runs from magnetic heading zero zero degrees to one seven nine, and the second from one eight zero to three five nine, creating two sectors which are the semi-cycles. So the sector falling between 0, 0 degrees and 179 degrees is called the odd sector. And any aircraft with a magnetic track that falls between a magnetic heading 0, 0, 0 degrees and 179 degrees will fall within this sector and will be compelled to fly at an odd flight level, for example, flight level 110. This is generally known as flying an easterly heading. In the second sector, the sector falling between 180 degrees and 359 degrees is called the event sector. And any aircraft with a magnetic track that falls between 180 and 359 degrees will fall within this sector and will be compelled to fly at an even flight level, for example, flight level 120, known as flying westerly, and it takes the even numbers. So let's apply what we've uh, just read as the method of operation of the semicircular rule. For example, a flight is to take place from point A to point B, then the true track measured from the map is 0 to 0 degrees and the variation is 140 degrees westerly. The commander has obtained the highest point en route as 8,000 feet and elects to fly an airfall flight level. The magnetic track is 034 and then we consider the true track and variation which will be then the odd flight level has to be flown through uh, through the heading 034 and considering the safety altitude and the obstacle then we get a flight level of 10,500 feet but we chose to fly an IFR flight therefore odd level after 10,500 feet is flight level 110 and VFR flight will fly heading 105 On the application, again, of the semicircular rule, just on subdivision of these uh, sectors, 
Therefore, we have to go through the whole process of from flight level 150 all the way to flight level 330. So, all flights operating in uncontrolled airspace at or above 1500 feet AGL above ground level during the day and all aircraft in uncontrolled airspace at night are required to operate on flight levels within accordance of the same circular rule and the lowest available flight level for this purpose is flight level 150 15 correction although there is 1000 feet uh, between IFR, fly, uh, IFR levels and uh, uh, 1000 between VFR levels there is only 500 between an IFR level and a VFR level and it's very important that pilots maintain their cruising levels accurately no VFR exists above flight level 150 and only ex the only exemption is military aircraft in military airspace which may however operate VFR flight above flight level 150. From the diagram it can be seen that from flight level 150 therefore upwards the vertical separation increases from 500 between levels to 1000 this continues all the way to flight level 290 from flight level 290 and up the vertical separation between levels changes from 1000 to 2000 note this increase in vertical separation is two is due to the decrease in accuracy of the altimeter with increased altitude and pressure fluctuations so don't be surprised about this uh, increase and because we just highlighted the increase is due to accuracy of the altimeter with increased altitude and pressure fluctuations. Lastly, as you may uh, ask yourself where there is 3,000 and 4,000 feet jump after flight level 280, this was simply done to ensure that flight level, uh, that 2,000 separation is created and then maintained. Remember above flight level 280, even levels have odd numbers, but they are still considered even levels. As a conclusion, I would like to make the following comment. While in controlled airspace, the air traffic controller may decide to use levels which are not semicircular. This is allowed uh, as all aircraft are then under control and however, as far as possible, the appropriate correct level should be used. If along uh, an air route, there is there is also this possibility that opposite traffic may select the same semicircular level the air traffic control services are to create procedures to ensure that opposite traffic select different semicircular levels. And uh, the third point is uh, when flying from one point to another, the variation might change and requiring possible level change. In such instances, the mean average variation is to be used, thus preventing a level change if the magnetic track with this mean variation falls between the same circulars 359.5 for example round the figure up to the next highest which is 360 or 000, 000, 000 degrees so as a recap of uh, what we've done uh, in the conclusion and uh, some questions uh, on this uh, I want us to attempt uh, these questions and then uh, you will uh, get the answer just below it. For example, which track or heading will determine whether an odd or even level is to be used? The correct answer is the magnetic track. Since the true track as measured from a map with a protractor it has to be uh, has to be calculated to get the magnetic track due to magnetic variations and deviations. So the magnetic track will be equal to magnetic heading, which is compass reading, if there is no deviation or compass error and no wind. The next question is, uh, a magnetic track of 275 would mean that an aircraft would be flown at which level? Definitely, this has to be even level because this sector falls between 180 degrees and 359 degrees, which is a westerly, westerly uh, uh, numbers and so we should fly in the event sector and flight within uh, this sector are compelled to fly at an even flight level for example flight level 140. 
The next event flight, uh, the third question is the next event flight after flight level 280. The next event flight we said after flight level 280 to, uh, to increase the separation, therefore we need to fly flight level 310. Remember that after flight level 280, the next event flight level jumps to 3000 to flight level 310 and then from to flight level 290 odd and uh, flight level 310 even the jumps the, the the jump is then to the next respective level will be 4000 at a time and so this marks the end of our discussion for today and i want to thank you very much for watching our channel and uh, uh, we will be bringing more content uh, concerning aviation and if you like our channel please subscribe and thank you for watching bye bye